And so China undertook uh, over the last 20 years an extensive program of investment both in new laws and new technology and monitoring systems to try and reduce the PM 2.5 levels as well as other air quality and air particulates. In terms of the cost, this was an extremely expensive undertaking. The central government and the city government of Beijing allocated close to 2.6 US billion dollars over the period of 10 years from 2009 to 2017 to deal with solutions to air pollution. And I think that's one of the things that Glinda mentioned is we do actually have solutions to air pollution. There may be no single cause and there's no single solution, but there are a number of mechanisms we can adopt and a number of technologies we can use to try and reduce air pollution. But even despite that, over 20 years of concerted action um, by the central government and the state government, in uh, the city government in Beijing, there are still a number of extreme days and there is still levels of pollution that exceed um, the WHO limit. So what did the Beijing central government and the Beijing city government do over the 20 year plan? So there was a recent review uh, in 2020 of the Beijing experience by the United Nations Environment Program and the Beijing municipal government that highlighted the air quality management system. And it identified a number of points. One was complete legislation and enforcement mechanism. There was a strong law that was enacted by the central government, but there was a strong enforcement mechanism to ensure compliance. There was systematic planning that the government adopted both at central level and at the local government level, a number of focused planning goals to address each of the elements of air pollution. There were local standards that were adopted to address those at that Beijing level that were different from other levels in China. There was a strong monitoring capacity. So they installed a number of monitoring stations so that they could identify and keep track of air quality issues. And very importantly, there was a high public environmental awareness. There was a very much an awareness that the need to engage the community was paramount to the success of a good strategy to reduce air pollution. In terms of the law, China enacted a law on air pollution prevention and control in 2015. They had adopted an emergency plan for extreme air pollution to address those extreme elements, but the idea that it was an emergency plan made it very clear that action was required. They then adapted a clean air action plan, but the law on air pollution prevention and control was very clear. And it had a very strong article for the purpose of protecting and improving the environment that was the goal of this particular piece of law. It also made it clear that enterprises, institutions, and other producers and operators shall implement effective pollution control measures to prevent and reduce air pollution. So it had a very clear goal that it wasn't about regulating air pollution. It wasn't about creating a permit system. It was about uh, reducing air pollution and pollution control. Um, and it was about ensuring that these enterprises would bear the liability for air quality damages if they've caused it um, in breach of the law uh, or that uh, factory was not allowed to operate. Um, there was an installation of a thousand air monitoring stations for PM 2.5 across Beijing, and it was connected to real time and public access to air monitoring data. So this data was freely available to communities and people could access it through their phones and through the internet to become aware of those potential opportunities or potential issues for air quality. In addition, um, they also introduced a series of, of warnings so that in red days or purple days, people were actively warned that this was uh, a very significant issue. And if they had air quality, uh, if they were um, likely to be impacted by poor air, air quality, um, they should stay indoors. Um, there were strong incentives to reduce emissions. In the case of Beijing, a number of heating in buildings and apartments were done by coal um, or wood burning, and the government paid to ensure that these were replaced through other mechanisms for providing heating in the winter. Um, there was a halting of new build coal fire power plants, a very important uh, decision made to stop new coal fired power plants. There was also the conversion of existing coal fired power plants to coal gasification. This still has significant greenhouse gas implications, but it certainly reduces um, the level of uh, particulate matter in the air. So there were the clean air action plans for the public warnings that I've already mentioned, and there were closure of air polluting facilities to extreme air pollution events. 
uh, whether it was the Beijing Olympics or the APEC uh, meetings in Beijing, um, the government closed air polluting facilities um, for those events, but also when the air quality reached certain levels, there were mandatory requirements to close. And more importantly, prosecutions and financial penalties for breaching air quality standards were launched and factories were prosecuted for breaching their licenses and for causing air pollution. So one of the questions really is, did this 20 year process work? Um, and it can be seen from this particular set of maps. And this was a report that was released just recently. Um, it shows that uh, in certain areas in China, uh, even areas outside of Beijing, that there have been a strong uh, reduction in the amount of particulate matter in terms of a 9% decline since 1990. There was, in terms of household air pollution, um, a significant decline. Um, they call it 85% of household air pollution. That in and of itself is a very significant health benefit. Um, changing from coal-fired or wood-fired burning uh, to either gas or um, other forms of electric um, clean systems of cooking and heating also improve the indoor air quality, which has significant benefits uh, for women and children in particular. So thank you very much for allowing me to share that experience about um, Beijing in China. Must be remembered that this is an area with a population of about 20 to 25 million people. It's the significant area and significant uh, location of a number of polluting industry, coal-fired power plants. But it showed how using all of the opportunities, technology, legislation, uh, and public engagement, that there is a real possibility and a real mechanism to reduce air pollution and, and to increase uh, air quality. It's not a simple task. It requires a great deal of commitment, but the experience in Beijing can be used on a number of the mega cities and the other cities uh, in Southeast Asia and, and the rest of Asia together. Thank you very much for the opportunity.